What's going on, garden fans? Welcome back to the Permaculture Homestead. It is very early here in spring, Zone 8, South Carolina, and my backyard is already starting to look like a thick, dense food forest. In today's episode, I'm gonna give you a tour of this whole food forest, show you what eight years of gardening has done on 2,000 square feet. Come on back, enjoy the journey. Welcome back to my home site, garden fans. Uh, I want to start today's tour on a macro level, micro, micro to the macro. If you can understand how I'm doing things on a very small scale, then what I'm doing on a bigger scale is just going to make a lot more sense. So I have this early spring planted uh, vegetable patch right off my back patio. And I'm growing things here like raspberry, salad greens, kale, collards, chamomile. We have parsley growing here. We have garden peas growing. And I utilize this densely planted companion planted scheme going on. So I've got two nice rows of salad greens growing here and interplanted with them are things like kale and collards. And basically as my wife and I come through here and chop down the salad greens, uh, we are liberating the kale and collards for later on in the season. Also, as we continue to kind of chop and drop our way down these two rows of salad greens, by the time we get down to the end of it, well, the beginning of the row is already growing again. So we can kind of chop and drop our way down this salad uh, line and feed ourselves for a few weeks like that. Um, like I said, also we have here raspberries, which are the main crop, the perennial main crop. And things like the peas are providing nitrogen for these raspberries. And this is just a seasonal crop. So once we've got our peas off of them, we'll chop and drop those and kind of liberate the raspberries. Uh, like I said, if you can see some of the chamomile here, we have chamomile coming up. And the chamomile is going to be a great ground cover for these raspberries later on in the season. Some other uh, seasonal and perennial herbs we have growing are mint, spearmint, and then we have this rose campion here as a flower uh, for pollination. So keeping in mind this densely planted compa companion planting, um, we're going to kind of zoom this up into a bigger scale. Come on over. Okay, garden friends, zooming out micro to the macro, I am at the end of a 25 foot swale and I have a tree planted every six feet. And in between each of my trees, I have some sort of shrub, whether it's um, a elderberry or a gumi berry, nitrogen fixing iliagnus. So right here to my right, I have a mulberry tree growing and it's flanked on each side less than six feet apart by two gumi berry. Now these two gumi berries are providing nitrogen for the main crop, which is the mulberry tree. If I just take one step forward, I have a bay bush as an understory shrub growing under my tree. The next tree, six feet apart, is another mulberry tree. And here again, six feet from that tree, I have a jujube tree. Now I'm about six foot two, so my wingspan is six feet. It's very dense and tightly packed in here because I only have so much space. Um, Six feet from that mulberry, we have a fig tree right here. This is a black mission fig. And once again, in between these two trees, I have a mix of gumi berry and elderberry growing. The next tree pairing six feet apart is a peach tree. And we have a pawpaw patch growing on right here. Um, the ground cover, everything growing in the ground, is mostly grass right now. However, as we continue to develop this year and my rabbit tractor kind of comes through and eats down all this grass as she poops and fertilizes the area, I'm going to be interplanting some vining squash, zucchini, and perennial herbs in this area. And I'm planting a lot of perennial herbs to try to take up the function of this grass and hopefully drown it out over the years to come. Let's take a closer look at that. Okay, I want to just walk you down that 25 foot swale just to give you an idea of once again how dense and thick it is packed in my 2,000 square feet of growing space. Here is a pawpaw patch just starting to uh, um, kind of leaf out for the spring here. It's already began to set um, fruit. So we have pawpaw on the vine starting to show up. Uh, the pawpaws are spreading 
as this place continues to develop, and I'm gonna allow those to spread. They're gonna kind of take the space of all the peach trees that I have growing here. The peach trees have been less productive than my pawpaws, so I'm kind of pruning, coppicing my peach trees while allowing the pawpaws to kind of grow up. Here is that black mission fig I was talking about. Well over 20 feet now. It is flanked by a nitrogen fixing gumi berry with elderberry also. Next tree over is a mulberry tree, like I was saying. It's starting to set some fruit. And then there's another mulberry tree, also about 15, 20 feet, starting to set fruit. So my yard here, it's very thick, it's very dense. I try to put a food item every six feet apart. Um, from the back to the front, you could barely even see the back of my house. But as this place continues to develop throughout the year, it's gonna get even thicker and a lot more dense. Um, I wanna talk to you about one more thing I got going on back here, my water harvesting. Water catchment and water harvesting is super important for me uh, and for any home gardener. I have a uh, 900 gallons of water storage here, and these are three 300 gallon tanks catching water off the back of my house. And each one of these tanks is tube fed to a particular swale here on my site. And each swale, when I dump 300 gallons down into it, is gonna be watering a set of trees down the line. So let me show you that in action. Okay, for me, garden fans, watering is as easy as opening a valve. From there, water is gravity fed through a pool tube that works its way up to a trench that I have dug on contour. And this trench meanders its way down my property and the water soaks. This trench will fill with water, soak down and make itself available at the root zone for my main crop trees. Things like my jujube, my pawpaws, mulberries, and peach tree here. Now I'm at the other end of that swale. Let's just see how long it takes for that water to kind of meander its way down here to the end of the trench. Now this trench in particular is about 20 feet. Not the biggest one on site. This is at the top of my property. So as water fills up, it's gonna kind of work its way down and basically to the left. The elevation is to the right. Okay, garden fans, for the sake of YouTube, I've sped that footage up a little bit. That's taken about eight minutes. And in eight minutes, I've gotten a trench here on my property filled with water and flowing. And in about eight minutes, what we've done is dump 125 gallons of water down that trench. So I'm gonna stop right there just to kind of show you the ease of this whole system. Everything is easy. I try to, you know, I call what I do lazy man gardening. Low, low, low maintenance for high maximum density, maximum effectiveness, and maximum yield. Uh, last little companion planted patch I want to show you today garden fans is at the very top of my property right here near the chicken shed. It's a, it's a point in my property where I have a lot of fertility. A lot of fertility from this chicken zone washes down the hill and into some of these swales. Uh, the whole companion planting starts with two plum trees and a fig that are growing here in the chicken shed. There is a muscadine grape growing up a trellis and down this fence line kind of living in the shade of these plum trees. 
I have a giant Hugel mound back here. Now this used to be, this giant mound at the top of my property uh, used to be three big vegetable boxes years ago. And I have things like blackberry, thornless blackberry. I have gummyberry, more Iliagnus multifloria growing. We have pomegranate growing here. Once again, companion planted with so we have a pomegranate and a nitrogen fixing shrub just growing right next to each other, support species. We have a Mexican beauty berry here in the corner that has yet to break dormancy from winter. And then just the whole place has this ground cover of things like lemon balm, mint, and some of the wild thorny blackberries are growing here, garden fans. So uh, I hope if you're not already that you do hit that subscribe button. Please give this video a thumbs up. If you have any questions about permaculture or what I'm doing here in general, please just ask and uh, keep in touch because this gardening season, I've got a feeling, is going to be one of the most abundant that I've had yet in nine years. Really appreciate you all coming out today for the visit. If you've got any questions, just ask. God bless.